All right, this is probably my favorite question so far, and I'll explain why. A potential divider consists of a thermistor and a light-dependent resistor, right? This is the setup. It's literally in series. Which condition gives the smallest voltage V, B, across the LDR? So you want the smallest amount of voltage, right? So if there were two normal resistors and not fancy, so the smallest amount of resistance Oh, sorry, so the smallest amount of voltage over here would come by the fact that your resistance for this resistor should be the least and the resistance for the one on top should be a maximum that would give you a maximum or sorry a minimum voltage across this and a maximum voltage across this. So with that in mind I gotta find a setting where the resistance is the maximum over here and the resistance is a minimum over here. Now, the set, we go on to the second phase of the question, which is my thermistors graph and my uh, light dependent resistors graph. So for temperature versus resistance, sorry, resistance versus temperature, this is actually kind of like this. It's actually a curve, but I mean, we don't care too much right now, as long as we consider them proportional, it doesn't matter, right? And that's what we're told. And for the LDR, the resistance varies with the luminosity or the brightness. I'll just call it luminosity. Or you could, you know, that's another word for brightness, right? How much light it, there is. And that also decreases as luminosity increases. So with that in mind, can I figure out a con combination uh, where this is, this voltage is a minimum over here? Okay, so I want a maximum resistance. I'll get a maximum resistance when the temperature for the thermistor is really low. Let's get a better color out and white in mind, right? This is what I want. So this needs to be cold. The temperature needs to be cold. And the brightness, what do you think? The resistance needs to be a minimum. So over here, resistance decreases as the brightness increases. Shoo, you want the maximum brightness, right? High brightness, I'll just put an arrow on top. High brightness, right? So my combination is cold and Right, that's what I want. What option matches that? The option matching it is cold and light. B is my answer. B is my answer. Right? Easy? Moving on. A uniform plank is pivoted at its midpoint. Two weights are added to the plank one weight on each side of the pivot in the positions shown. Okay, okay. So pretty normal standard setup. Uh, vertical force is applied to point X to balance the plank. What is the size difference of this force? So the moment of the force, there are two moments by the force, right? or like three. Uh, let's call them, let's call them one is the moment because of x, the other is moment because of, um, yum, 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 let's call this a because of this box, and this one counter moment door thing, and which is, which is, which is because of this thing, let's call it b, right? Now, the if you look at this as the center, this can move clockwise or counterclockwise, right? So I want it to balance out. So the moment caused by X, which is the moment caused by X. Now I'm gonna make this a little complicated in equation form, but don't stress too much, right? I hope you understand what I'm trying to do. The moment caused by X, right? That's There's some moment caused by X. This moment is, I'll just as an indicator for myself, is gonna be this, right? Plus there, there's a moment caused by uh, A, which is also uh, counterclockwise. So the sum of these moments need to be equal to this for this entire thing to balance out. So I'll say 
the sum of these moments need to be equal to the counter moment which is the B right so they all need to be balanced out once we have that can we work it out what's the moment for a the, let's say the force applied is F right that's F times what's the distance from the pivot this is the distance from the pivot pivot is here your hands going to be here applying the force as four so let's just say for F right then you have uh, the force over here which is 12 times the distance which is 2 so that's um, that's uh, going to be 2 times 12 right and all of this is equal to 2 because this is 2 times 8 right equals to so that's 16 and that's 2 times 12 is 24 and the force is still 4f right now f will come out to be F will come out to be 16 minus 24 and we're getting a negative answer. That's negative 8 divided by 4, negative 2 newtons. That's the force required, right? Now, why is it negative? Now, over here, I assumed the force was downward, like that. And that's why I put my moment as downward as well. Now, actually, this side is more heavier than this side, even before you apply this, and it makes sense because there's a... 12 newton at the same distance compared to a counterweight of 8 newtons at the same distance, right? So this side is already heavier and I assume the force was downward so I kind of put it in my equation like that and I'm getting, oh sorry, I forgot to put the negative sign, negative sign and my force is coming out to be negative. So the force was assumed to be in this direction and that's coming out to be negative too. So does it make sense? that the force is actually upward and positive, right? Does that make sense? So let's do, let's finish this out. The force has to be two Newtons. So C and D are now, and it needs to be upwards. That's what we figured it out. And it makes sense, it needs to be upward, just by looking at it which I should have done earlier, but I didn't, but hey, well, I'm a math guy, right? Does this make sense? I hope it does. No, correct answer is, the correct answer is B. -b, -b. Uh, this is kind of an unfair question because I feel that in this particular system, this is different. Um, and also it's not too clear. They're not telling you this is what side is top. Normally you'd be thinking you're looking at a toaster from the top and this is the downward view this is from the top view it's actually lying flat down right so let's read the question a slice of bread is placed under the red hot electric grill to make toast over here how does the heat energy reach the bread so what do you think right this is heating so you know when you're near a toaster you see it's glowing red it's not only glowing red it's also glowing red sorry glowing in infrared which you can't see but you can feel infrared is here it's emitting infrared and it's heating up the toast so radiation is definitely a part of this answer now conduction is easily out because there's no solid over here to conduct there's only air which you know uses convection to heat but in this question, which I feel is a highly unfair, what's happening is if it heats up the air, the air is gonna rise up. It's going to rise up, right? And if it's gonna rise up, well, it's not gonna heat the toast, right? So, it's going to be 
not convection. So I'm just going to write that down to emphasize not convection. Convection. Now this is confusing for most people. Now notice how how would you tell? Because I think there's a lot of other appliances very similar to th this, and you think they're heating it through convection for sure. A hair dryer comes to mind, right? So I'll explain that, and this is not through convection because this particular grill is just a line, like a wire of uh, a metal. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, right? So yeah, so it's gonna do a poor job heating the air anyway. So all this toast is heating up through radiation and it's gonna do a poor job. Now in a hair dryer, what you see is the coil itself doesn't get hot enough to glow. That's one thing. And the other thing is you, You've seen hair dryer coils, I think, through the fan. They're circular, and this is just a very modest number of coils over here. But in that, there's a lot of coils. Like the coil is a lot, it's very dense. Maximizing what? The surface area? Maximizes surface area, right? And um, yeah, and the fan is also present to push the air through fan is also pushing air through and the reason why there's so much surface area is the air tries to cool this coil down while flowing through it and uh, once it does that the air itself gets really hot and yeah so that's how a hair dryer works over here you you see a very different thing you see no fan and you see no coils so the intent is not to heat the air at all. I hope I'm making sense when I say this mechanism solely relies on radiation and you can tell that for toasters even that this is the case because it's not designed the design element you've seen a toaster and you like you know you've seen a toaster and it's designed to heat through radiation rather than uh, convection. So the answer is radiation only. It's D. Interesting question, I think very easy. I'm surprised people find this difficult. A ray of light uh, <clears throat> passes through a box, three lenses, one, two, and three. And then I wanna ask what lenses are you putting it that makes up these lights? So let's take a look at the first one. Um, what's happening to the light? Is it bending towards the principal axis over here? Yeah, right, because the angle is kind of decreasing. If this is like close to 40 and now it's close to 20 or something. So it's moving more towards the, the angle is, the light is now closer to the principal axis. Well, not closer, but like, you know, it's changing its angle more like the, towards the principle of axis, right? So this has to be a converging lens because the light is converging. And the same for number two, because you see the lights are converging as well. Is it the same for number three? You see the angle of the light is kind of, it's not more converging towards it. It's actually going away from it now. So over here, there's a diverging lens involved. If I can draw it properly. There we go. So it's CCD, CCD. Okay, where do we have? Converging, 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 diverging. The correct answer is B. A six volt battery is connected to a network containing five identical resistors, a voltmeter that has one LED connected to the point K as shown. So this entire row is connected to the voltmeter, so they all have this, you know, same difference. So let me just highlight that. You want to compare this side to another side, which will give you a voltage of which point should the lead L over here be connected so that the voltmeter reading is three volts. So let's take a look at this. What's going to happen if there, if you put it here? Well, if you put it over here, it's connected to this entire area. It's actually connected directly both, it's the same as putting this voltmeter one over here, one over here across it, right? So it's gonna reach six volts. So you want exactly half of that. 
Wouldn't it be great if you had two resistors dividing each of this voltage? Look at this setting over here, right? This is dividing this voltage because the voltage over here is, if this is, you know, like it's six across this. So, and they're both equal in resistance. So you can work out the math, but like it's pretty obvious if you put this lead over here, it's gonna halve this voltage. Because it's six over here, it's gonna drop by half because these two are the same resistance, and then it's gonna drop again, right? And you've seen it in a simple battery with two resistors in series across it, the voltage in the center just drops by half, right? So the correct answer is A. I tell some of my stu uh, students that some questions are horrible <laughs> and this 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 is that. The diagram shows that the wiring of three pin main plug, there's an error in the diagram. What is the error? The cable cover C is not under the clip S. The cable cover C is not under or in the plug. So what's happening is the you know, wire is exposed on the outside of the plug and that might lead to, that was a, yeah, that, that's actually true. So yeah, that's actually the answer. Let's move on and like, that's the answer though. The question is so silly. I don't even know what to say, but everything else is correct. The earth wire E is connected to the wrong terminal. No, the top one is normally or like that's the rule the top one is normally the earth one and when you have like two pins in a normal you know non-earth sort of plug the appliance still works right because the top one is dedicated to earth have you noticed that right so at my, you don't need earth but earth is good to have right so as long as you have connections to neutral and live you can connect Okay, the fuse F is connected to the live wire L. That's 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 fine. That's that's its job. The live wire L is connected to the wrong fuses. Do not have wrong ends. They work, you know, uh, the same. So it's not really an issue. And B, C, and D are incorrect. A is our correct answer. All right, a 100 watt lamp is switched on for five hours each day for three weeks. The cost of one unit of electricity is $0.24. So if you had, so one unit is one kilowatt hour. That means if you had a, something for a rating of a thousand watts, and if that would you know be on for an hour the bill would be that much right so let's say if you had a hair dryer which consumed a hundred watts which is also one kilowatts of electricity and you let it run for one hour it'll take so much energy that it'll charge you zero point z sorry zero point two four dollars that's what a kilowatt is right but we don't have a kilowatt we have or like much smaller thing right so this is one tenth of the wattage this is one tenth of it so we have a, something that's a hundred watts not taking too much power this will run also for one hour so can i say it'll take one tenth of the bill because it's taking one tenth of the electricity because this is one tenth this is also one tenth right and so this lamp switched on for one hour will charge you 0 0.24 um 0 0.024 dollars that's like 2.4 cents right okay but this lamp is on for five hours a day right five hours we don't care what this value is we care that this has to be on for five hours so you're being charged for five of these hours so that's going to take the bill up to my trusty 
phone calculator which disappoints me a lot more because it's almost impossible to quickly open it times five this is gonna be 0 0.12 dollars let's take away that second dot it's confusing five days a week so five days a week sorry five hours a day that's five hours a day but this is gonna run for three weeks each week is seven days right so that's 21 so it's gonna run for 21 days so multiply this value by 21 and I get 2.52 dollars right and the correct answer is C the diagram shows a wire PQ North Pole and South Pole of the magnet that's the North Pole essentially they're asking use the Fleming's left hand rule and figure out what's the force on this wire so the left hand rule right is the right hand one just remember your right hand versus your left hand and the left hand rule so your thumb indicates the direction of the uh, force your first finger or index finger your index is the direction of the magnetic field and I have to look at my hand to recall this and your second finger or your middle finger let's call it middle will be current right so you gotta align your middle finger according to the current like that that's your middle finger like that and uh, your direction of the magnetic field goes from north to south so your index finger needs to point like that so that's how your index finger is right so if I try to do that it's kind of difficult so the index finger if I look at it, it's pointing towards me and my middle finger is pointing the right of me this is what it looks like so naturally if you have a left hand for your left hand and not a right one or anything confusing like that you will realize that the thumb is pointing towards into the page right and if it's doing that the force that's indicating the direction of the force which is oh into the page right into the page the answer is 